Hi class, welcome to Advantage. Today, we're gonna look at taking the derivative of the quotient of two functions. Now let's go back to things that you already know about. Taking the derivative of a power, a, func a, a variable raised to a power like x to the one-third, we know the derivative is one-third x to the negative two-thirds power. Or taking the derivative of a trigonometric function like the sine of x, we know that the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. The question at hand today is, what if we were considering a rational function or a quotient of two functions like, I'm gonna call it w of x, is the quotient of two functions. For example, in our case, f of x is x to the one-third, g of x is sine of x, how would we take the derivative of that quotient? I would ask you to pause the video now, if you've never thought of this before, and just make a conjecture. How do you think the derivative might play out? Sometimes when students are asked to think that way, their idea is, well, just take the derivative of the numerator and get one-third x to the negative two-thirds, and just take the derivative of the denominator and get cosine of x, and let's call that the derivative. Well, the reality is that's not how it works. It's gonna be different. And rather than um, go into a big Desmos explanation like I did in a previous video on the product rule, I'm gonna ask you to go check out that video and for this video, we're gonna focus on how would we take the derivative of a quotient? Let's develop the quotient rule. So we're gonna explore this idea of taking the derivative of a quotient in general by thinking about any quotient w of x being the, uh, a function f of x divided by another function g of x. As long as g of x cannot equal zero, that would be a problem. So let's assume that. Now. A good mathematical principle is go back to things you already know and build from there. So in this case, the way I'm gonna prove the quotient rule is go back to something I already know called the product rule. Here's what I mean. Take this expression or this equation here and multiply both sides by g of x. So we have w of x times g of x. Now if I multiply this rational function by g of x, I'm gonna be left with just f of x. Now keep in mind, our goal is to find the derivative of w, to find w prime. So to do that, I'm gonna take the derivative of both sides of this equation. On the left side, notice we've got our product. So if you haven't studied the product rule, go back and watch that video, but we know how to take the derivative of a product, let's say. We do this. We take the first function as it is, we multiply it by the derivative of the second function. Plus, we take the second function as it is, and we multiply by the derivative of the first function. So the left side of the equation, we take the derivative using the product rule. On the right side of the equation, the derivative of f of x is just f prime of x. Now again, let's keep in mind of our, of our goal our goal is to figure out what the derivative of w would be. And notice that the derivative of w is located in our work so far right there. Our next several steps are gonna to be to just algebraically isolate w prime of x. Takes a couple of steps. Step number one, this term right here, we can subtract it from both sides of the equation. If I subtract this term from the left side of the equation, I'll be left with, g of x times w prime of x. And if I subtract this term from the right side of the equation, we'll have that. Now remember again, the goal is we wanna figure out what w prime of x is. We're trying to solve for w prime. There it is. So we're gonna make one last move. We're gonna divide both sides by g of x. So if I divide by g of x, on the left side, we'll divide out that g of x. g of x divided by g of x is one. So we'll just get w prime. And if we divide by g of x on this side, we'll have f, of, uh, f prime of x minus w of x times g prime of x, all divided by g of x. So one could conclude 
that the derivative of that quotient, f of x divided by g of x, is found by taking the derivative of the numerator, subtracting that rational function times the derivative of the denominator, and divide that difference by the denominator. However, we're going to clean it up just a little bit. We're going to express this just a little bit more cleanly by applying just two more algebraic maneuvers. First one, w of x, remember, was that rational function. So rather than say w of x there, we're going to replace w of x with its rational expression f of x divided by g of x. That got multiplied by g prime of x, and all of that gets divided by g of x. Now, this is great too. We could say that the derivative of w is found by taking the derivative of the numerator, subtract this product, which is the quotient times the derivative of the denominator, all divided by the denominator. We could leave it like that. But it's still a little bit messy too, so we're gonna make another move. We have a fraction within a fraction, algebraically speaking, we have a complex fraction. So to fix that, we are gonna do the following. We're gonna multiply both the numerator and the denominator by g of x. Now, we are allowed mathematically to do that because g of x divided by g of x is one, assuming that g of x is not zero. So we're just multiplying this expression by one, not changing its value. Now, when I multiply the numerator and denominator by g of x, watch what happens. So g of x gets multiplied by f prime of x by the distributive property. So g of x times f prime of x. g of x gets multiplied by this part. Now, when we multiply g of x by f of x divided by g of x, g of x divided by g of x will be 1, and so we'll, we'll be left with f of x times g prime of x. And then in the denominator, g of x times g of x, we could say is g of x squared. So the neatest way that in mathematics that we express the idea of the quotient rule is this. To take the derivative of a quotient, we'll take the denominator exactly as is. We'll multiply it by the derivative of the numerator minus take the numerator as it was times the derivative of the denominator and divide that entire difference by the denominator squared. The quotient rule. Again, I challenge you to maybe rewind this, maybe try it out yourself, think through all the algebraic manipulations that were needed to generate this quotient rule. But then let's just quickly apply it in our case. In our case, w of x was x to the one third divided by sine of x. So w prime, in our case, is gonna look like this. Take the g of x, that was the denominator, exactly as it is, sine of x. Multiply it by the derivative of f of x, that was the numerator. The derivative of the numerator is one third x to the negative two thirds power. Subtract f of x, the numerator, Multiply that by the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. And then divide all of that. That difference all gets divided by g of x, our denominator, squared. Now you have the derivative of that quotient. Not as we suppose, where we just take the derivative of the numerator and denominator independently. No, it's a little bit more involved than that. But there it is, and a little bit of background for why it's like that. I hope that helps.